Hello, and welcome to my channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. Now, statistics is confusing, even for intelligent, technical people. And for many people, the most confusing concept in statistics is fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, that's not surprising because that statement is a triple negative. It's like saying, I don't not have no money. And people just don't talk like that or think like that. The exception is statisticians who do talk like that. For example, consider this statistician's response to a marriage proposal. In this video, we'll employ this marriage proposal scenario, which is on the front cover of the book, as part of our clarification of this confusing concept. As usual, in the book and in these videos, we'll start out with a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, so that you can see on one page the most important things to understand about the concept. There are three keys to understanding for the concept of fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's go through the list fairly quickly and then follow that with a detailed explanation of each key. The first part of KTU number one is fail to reject the null hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis are the two possible conclusions from a hypothesis test. And the second part of KTU number one states that if P is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Here's the first part of key to understanding number two. The null hypothesis states that there is no statistically significant difference, change, or effect. And here's the second part of KTU number two. Fail and reject cancel each other out, leaving the null hypothesis in place as the conclusion from our test. Now experts disagree on this point, but our key to understanding number three says that whatever the words you use, practically speaking, it is okay to act as if you accept the null hypothesis when the result is fail to reject. Okay, so here on one page is a complete list of keys to understanding for the concept of fail to reject the null hypothesis. You may wish to pause the video here to read them together. And here, in case it makes it more memorable, we've added a preview of the outcome of the marriage proposal scenario. Her response of failing to reject the null hypothesis actually rejects the marriage proposal. We'll soon explain exactly how that works. But before we can provide an in-depth explanation of the keys to understanding, there are four concepts in these KTUs that we need to explain first. Hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis, P, the p-value, and alpha. In addition to the explanation here, there are or will be individual videos for each of these four concepts. Hypothesis testing is one of two main methods for inferential statistics. The other method is confidence intervals. In inferential statistics, we cannot get all the data in a population or process. The population or process is too big or it keeps changing. So we take a sample of data and we calculate a statistical property, say the mean, of the sample. We then use that calculated mean of the sample to estimate or infer the mean of the population or process. Then we could do a hypothesis test for means we would use a t-test. The test could tell us, for example, whether there was a statistically significant difference between our sample mean and a comparison mean. Hypothesis tests include t-tests, f-tests, ANOVA, and so on. A hypothesis test 
can be performed in five steps, as we'll show on the next slide. The five-step method for hypothesis testing. Step one, state the problem or question in the form of a null hypothesis and, optionally, an alternative hypothesis. Step two, select a level of significance alpha. Step three, collect a sample of data. Step four, perform a statistical analysis, for example, t-test, f-test, or ANOVA, on the sample data. This analysis calculates a value for p. Come to a conclusion about the null hypothesis by comparing p to alpha and reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it. The next of the four concepts that we will explain is the null hypothesis. Note that the null hypothesis is used in step one and step five of this five-step method for hypothesis testing. Someone once said that hypothesis testing was the reason that statistics is sometimes called sadistics. Language like fail to reject is certainly a big contributor to confusion, but the concept of null hypothesis itself is a part of the problem. Rather than a positive statement such as the data has a normal distribution, a null hypothesis would state it negatively as there is no difference between the data distribution and a normal distribution. I find that null hypotheses can usually be stated as either no difference, no change, or no effect. Here are some examples. There is no difference between the mean effectiveness of the two medicines. There has been no change in the process standard deviation from its historical value. The training program has had no effect on worker performance. The next of the four concepts to explain is P, the p-value. P is the probability of an alpha error or false positive error. It is the error of seeing something that isn't there, the difference, change, or effect, which is described by the null hypothesis. The value of P is calculated by the test using the sample data. The last of our four concepts to explain is alpha, the level of significance, or the significance level. In step two of the five-step method of hypothesis testing, the person performing the test selects a value for alpha. Most commonly, 5% is selected. This provides a 95% level of confidence of avoiding an alpha error. As the illustration shows, Alpha defines the dividing line between values of P, which indicate a statistically significant difference, change, or effect, and those which don't. For example, if P is subsequently calculated to be 8%, let's say, then P is greater than alpha, and we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If P is calculated to be 4%, however, then P is less than alpha, and we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, that concludes our explanation of the four concepts of hypothesis testing, null hypothesis, P, or alpha. Let's now begin our more detailed explanation for each of the three keys to understanding. In step two of the five-step method for hypothesis testing, we selected a value for alpha, and in step four, a value for p is calculated by the test. This gives us what we need for the comparison in key to understanding number one. If p is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If p is not greater than alpha, that is, if p is less than or equal to alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. Now the following is described in detail in the video, Reject the Null Hypothesis, but here's a brief description. If p is greater than alpha, then the value of the test statistic, say z, must be less than the critical value, z critical. The two comparisons are statistically identical because the p-value is derived from the test statistic value, they both contain the same information, 
And likewise, the critical value is derived from alpha, so they both contain the same information. So either comparison can be used. As we said earlier, the null hypothesis is a statement which says that there is no statistically significant difference, change, or effect. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then the null hypothesis stands, because fail and reject cancel each other out. So, if the conclusion from the test is fail to reject the null hypothesis, then we conclude that there is no difference or no change or no effect, which is exactly what the null hypothesis says. Key to understanding number three says, practically speaking, it's okay to act as if you accept the null hypothesis. If our instructor or our boss or our customer expects us to say, fail to reject instead of accept, then that's what we say. But either way, what do we do with the conclusion of fail to reject? We're not going to act as if the test has told us nothing. We're going to act as if we have accepted the null hypothesis. And many experts say it's fine to come out and say that you accept the null hypothesis. What's the reasoning behind saying fail to reject instead of accept? It seems to go back to the premise that you can't prove a negative. That is true if we require 100% accuracy, but hypothesis testing does not strive for 100% accuracy. It works with a level of confidence, confidence, which as we have said is often 95%. In fact, if we could get 100% accuracy, we would not need hypothesis testing. We would just answer our question via counting, measurement, or precise formula. And here's one consequence of insisting that you can't prove a negative. You can't prove that unicorns don't exist. Okay, we started with this marriage proposal scenario. What have we learned? First of all, we can interpret fail to reject as accept. So, she is accepting the null hypothesis. And what does the null hypothesis tell us? We said that the null hypothesis was a statement of no difference or no change or no effect. How does that apply here? Prior to the proposal of marriage, they were not engaged to be married. The null hypothesis would be that there is no change in that status. His proposal will result in no effect on that status. So the null hypothesis would be that things remain the same for this couple. There is no change in their status, no new status of being engaged to be married. And by failing to reject it, she accepts the null hypothesis. That is, she accepts no change they will not be engaged to be married. It appears that her suitor knows something about statistics because he understands that her response means that she has rejected the marriage proposal. So, unfortunately, it's not a happy ending for him this time. However, in the video on reject the null hypothesis, we would expect a happy ending for him and hopefully for her. Okay, that's it for our clarification of this confusing concept. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfrom-a-to-z.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job, while studying, or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromatoz.com slash blog. I've got some interesting things there, and like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and Twitter as at Stats A to Z. Till next time, I'm looking forward to communicating with you.